Revelation chapter 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song, but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb with suavery goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, say the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sought on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle! and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it onto the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. This is the word of God.
Heavenly Father, works. This morning, Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to come and worship with us. Take full control of each device this morning. Have then one way in our lives. We ask for their children across the world, especially those that are stressed and those that are depressed. Speak through us this morning, Lord, and cleanse all your children, those that will be participating. We beg of you this morning. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And you know what a beautiful morning. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? It's nice to see you on Zoom. It's nice to see you there on YouTube. Good morning. This morning, I welcome you once again to Central Jamaica Conference's prayer platform. And here we worship, we pray, we rejoice, and we celebrate together as we worship this morning. I ask of you to continue to subscribe, share the link, and of course, like, so that when we are on, you will be notified. This morning, we have a very power pack worship session. We'll be having our praise and worship, and then we'll be praying. And mainly, we pray together. Today is the 34th day, yes, the 34th day of our prayer session. And I know that we would have been blessed each morning, each day. And we just continue to ask you to pray because every good thing that God tried to do, Satan put in his crazy head and we have to pray him away. So this morning, I welcome you. I welcome you. I welcome you. We from the Central Jamaica Conferences, welcome you to our worship session. So at this time, we're going to go straight into our praise and worship, after which we will have Elder Dexter Pusey with our prayer of adoration, thanksgiving, and praise. Oh, mercy. What is this? Good morning, everyone. This morning, we'll begin our song. The children of Israel sat down by the river. They wept in remembrance of Zion, their home. Led into bondage, they lost their song. They swung their harp on the willow. Don't hang your harp on the willow. Don't give up the rest. There's a crown to be won. Just keep your eyes up on Jesus. Someday you'll be glad when he says, well done. Satan has tested me so many times. He says, give up, there's no roots to go on. But I using for Jesus, I made up my mind. I'll not hang my harp on the willow. Well done. Don't hang your harp on the willow. Don't give up the rest. There's a crown to be won. Just keep your eyes up on Jesus. Someday you'll be glad when he says, Well done. Don't give up the rest, there's a crown to be won. Keep your eyes upon Jesus, someday you'll be glad when he says, well done. There you'll be glad when he says, well done. Amen. 
The next song is God and God Alone. God and God alone created all things we call our own. From the mighty to the small, the glory in them all. It's God's and God's alone. God and God alone reveal the truth of all we call and known and all the best and worst of men can change the master's plan it's gods and gods alone god and god alone it fits the thing the universe is thrown let everything that lives reveal its truest praise for god and god alone god and god alone will be the joy of our eternal home he will be our one deserve, our hearts will never tired of God and God alone. God and God alone, it fits to take the universe's throne. Let everything that lives reveal his truest praise for god and good alone let everything that lives reveal his truest praise for god and god alone amen Amen, amen. God and God alone. Let us at this time get in the attitude of prayer in our virtual space here on Zoom and also YouTube. Wherever you are this morning, let us give thanks. Our Heavenly Father, as the song says, God and God alone, we come to the only true and living God this morning, giving thanks and praise for another day. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have bestowed upon your people. The songwriter says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. We can all testify this morning of your goodness and your mercies. And so with that in mind, we praise you for you are worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you alone is worthy of our worship and our praise. And so we take our minds from things that so easily beset us. We take away our tendency to, to accept the praise and we place it at the feet of Jesus this morning. And so with that in mind, we, 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 we confess 
we come to you. We confess our sins to you. We have done so many things that is unlike you. So many things that have gone wrong in our lives. And this morning we, we, we ask for cleansing. We know you are willing to, to always forgive. And, and, and we come to you. We come to you with our hearts ready for that infilling of your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit move in our hearts. It makes a difference. Without your Holy Spirit moving and, 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 and pointing out right from wrong in our lives, then we're nothing. And so we come to you with your Holy Spirit at work. Have thine own way with us this morning. We place all into your hands. We are at number 24 day of sweet experience with you. We thank you, Lord. And we know you have great things in store for your people this morning. We are not going to allow anything to distract us from receiving your blessings. And so I place the entire package again into your hands. Thank you for hearing and for answering all requests this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Elder Pusey, for petitioning the throne on our behalf. Thank you. At this time, we'll be having the presentation by Donna McLafferty. He's not only a pastor, but he is an author. He is a missionary, a discipler, a trainer of disciples. He has a wonderful story. His name is Pastor Don McClafferty, and this is our conversation. Don, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you taking your time. Absolutely. It's a joy to be here with you. Here's what I want to do with you. We'll start at the beginning by having you tell me what you're doing right now. What okay. do you do? My wife and I, and my wife's name is April. Uh, so April and I are full-time volunteer missionaries. And our God-given call and our God-given passion is to disciple the new generations. And uh, we want them to know how awesome it is to trust Jesus Christ and follow Jesus and share Jesus with all the power of the Holy Spirit. And the mechanism to do that is primarily the home, which has been set aside many times. When I first got to know you, you were leading an organization uh, in Eastern Tennessee called Kids in Discipleship. So that's grown. Yes. Uh, I, wanted to, I want to be a little specific about the kinds of things you're doing and the sorts of places you're going. Okay. So the first thing is to call the generations to a revival with Jesus. Because a revival is to wake us up and to see the power of the Lord Jesus to break open our hearts to our need for Him. So we start out with revival. And then we train primarily parents and anybody else that has a calling to be a mentor to be a disciple maker of their children and of their teenagers, their youth. And then uh, we come alongside those families as they are growing to be disciples and we, we uh, encourage them and give them tools to be disciple makers out into the community. Yeah, I know you're traveling. There are times you travel to foreign countries yes. and uh, do all kinds of interesting things such yes. as, just tell me briefly because we'll circle back. Yes, um, we go into every continent except one. There's one that we just don't touch, Antarctica. But outside of Antarctica, we, we go wherever God calls. If he called me to Antarctica, yeah, I'd sure. go there too, of course. Yeah, I wouldn't be a little surprised. Yeah, but uh, we also go where it's difficult to go. Yeah. Sometimes we have to go 
uh, where you can't tell anybody where you're going. Mm. And Jesus knows where I'm going, and my wife knows, and a few family members, and, and that's it, and a few prayer partners. Which is really interesting, because if you think about countries like that, and, and of course you've said enough, but you say, oh, those are tough places. Yes. But God is calling you even to those places, yes. what we would call closed countries, yes. to share Jesus and to teach discipleship to people even behind closed doors. Yes. Really interesting. You know, I want to come back, and we'll do this in a few moments, and, and ask you about this. When, when, when we first met and you, you were teaching people to disciple their children, mm -hmm. which doesn't happen much very often these days. I, I know that's a blanket statement, but there's, this is a great lack. The church is only ever as strong as the home. Right. So what you're doing is of the utmost importance, but let's get to that in a moment. We'll go back to the beginning. Where did all this start? Where did you spring from? Mm. Well, I was born and raised in the first early years in Hawaii, the island of Oahu, Hawaii. Oh, tough. Yes, and so the, that was my first almost seven years. Was life. this was this a, a church work or military or, or what that had you in my Hawaii? My parents are teachers, and so they there taught there, and so I was born and raised there. Then we Fantastic. moved to Tennessee. All right. I've spent a good share of my life in the beautiful South. Amen. But then have been all over the United States, and also just most recently have been in the beautiful province of Alberta, Canada. Alberta, Canada. Alberta. Yes, yeah. 40 below zero sometime. Yeah, that's cold. Hey, so let's talk about this business about uh, ministry because somehow you, you, you found up yourself in ministry. That was right after college, was it? Yes. Uh, okay. in the, during the college years, I, I had thought that I was going to be an elementary school teacher. Oh. And then... Which God, is really uh, interesting, considering which is a you ministry. end up focusing on ministry to kids. Yes, yeah. yes. And I also, to this day, believe that teaching ministry is just as much a ministry as pastoral ministry. Amen. So in those years, God slowly, slowly drew me from, from teaching in a classroom to teaching and preaching wherever God sends me. And so uh, he, and he stirred my heart with that. But I had, no, I had no calling or understanding that it was going to be discipling the new generation. Mm, mm -hmm. I knew that I loved children and youth and ministry to them, and, but did not understand yet how important it was to minister to their families, yeah. not just the new generations. Yeah, yeah, really interesting. So where did, this, where did the call to ministry come from? Were you in college at the time? Were you a high school senior? When did you know you were, God wanted you to be a in pastor? The middle, in the middle of the college years, oh, yeah? that happened. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so you, you did your, your theology training. Yes. And what happened next? Where were you called? Where did you go? Uh, we went, uh, actually, I took uh, about six months out, five months out in uh, Tennessee. They, they lost a pastor and they needed somebody to work with their youth. So I went out in the middle of my college years. Oh, yeah. And went out for five months, got my feet wet, so to speak. Right. And was moved in my heart that this was definitely a calling from God. So where have you served along the way? In, in pastoral ministry. Let's, let's cover that and then get yes. we'll drill down. So uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, those states I've been in. And then uh, Michigan. Yeah. And then back to Tennessee. And I should say in Gulf, uh, all the Gulf states region. So Alabama, Mississippi. Panhandle of Florida, yeah. and then California, and then God uh, gave me a different call. Uh, still ministry, but he tweaked it. Mm -hmm. What did he do? Well, at 3 a.m. one morning, he awakened me from a deep, deep sleep. I had come back from being, in, I think, in Russia, where I was helping parents disciple their kids to Christ. And he awakened me out of a deep sleep, and my heart was pounding because it wasn't an audible voice, but I knew God was getting my attention. I knew he was awakening me from the sleep. And he called me by name. So I threw on my warm clothes and went out below the mountain, and I said, God, uh, why did you wake me up? I know you're getting my attention. Now, my wife and I had been praying for a couple of months and saying, God, what do you want us to do in our ministry? Because we loved our ministry right in Clovis, California, and we also have our global nonprofit ministry for helping disciple the new generations. But both were growing. So what do we do? Because you can't grow like this permanently without being stretched in a dangerous way. Yeah. So, and in that early morning, um, after much, much prayer and waiting on God, no answers at first. And it was cool and chilly and I, and I was tempted to go back and God kept saying, I called you out here. So seek me on this. So I, I waited and prayed under the stars. And I had this Bible out on an old log, like a stump. And it was all zipped up. 
And I said, God, whatever you're about to tell me, please anchor it in your word because I have a feeling you're going to stretch my faith with what you're about to tell me next. I need something to hang on to. And so as I waited on him, that still small voice of God said to my heart, to my mind, go to Ecclesiastes 3. So I opened my Bible and got my flashlight out and found Ecclesiastes 3, which is there's a time for everything, God says, and everything's beautiful in his time, not in your time, John, or my time, but in God's time. And so I said, I know that passage. And as soon as I said that, and God said, and that's your danger. You think you know it, but you don't know the timing I'm about to talk to you about. So I said, okay. So I, I, I quieted down a little bit, and, and I said, good, then humble my heart all over again. Help me to read it as if I did not know that passage. And so I read through it again, and then I closed the Bible, and I said, so what is it time for me to do? And he said, it's time for you to resign being a paid pastor and I said, why do you want me to do that? He said, I want you to be free to go anytime, anywhere, any cost for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want you to focus on calling young and old, children, youth, adults, to revival, and focus secondarily, right out of the revival, to equipping parents, teachers, pastors, other people who care about the new generations, equipping them to disciple the new generations. So not just sit in church but to live as a disciple of Jesus who disciples others. They need to have the, the joy of discipling others while you're a kid, while you're a teenager. Sure. So that was the call. Okay, uh, that opens up a can of worms for me here. I want to ask you about how you, how you launched into discipleship ministry, but I'm going to ask the question that everyone wants me to ask right now. There are some people who hear God's voice uh, telling him to, to run off with the neighbor's wife. That was God who told me. There's some people hear God's voice telling him to jump off a bridge. Mm-hmm. Some people never hear God's voice. Mm-hmm. God never speaks to them. Uh, both extremes are pretty dangerous spiritually. Yes, yes. You're talking about a very intimate experience with God mm-hmm. where he's communicating with you rather directly. Mm-hmm. How can people enter into an experience like mm-hmm. that? How can a person have an experience like that? And at the same time, know that it's rational mm-hmm. and faith-based mm-hmm. and they're not fooling themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good question. So uh, for me, uh, the most dangerous spot I can be in is to not surrender to Jesus Christ as Lord. So if I want to know the will of Jesus as my Lord, I need to surrender fully to him. Sure. And like, like not just intellectually, I mean with my whole life. And, and so even like that early morning, right there at the stump. I was on my knees and I said, Jesus, I surrender all I am as a person, all I have, you know, time, talent, treasure, whatever, um, successes, failures, all I am, all I have, including my, this is my most difficult one, my attitude. Mm, I surrender my attitude to Jesus as Lord. So that act of surrender is very, very pivotal to knowing the will of God. I also ask in Jesus' name, who has all power and authority, keep Satan from confusing me. Push him back so that I can hear you clearly. I, I pray next through James 1, 5 through 8. God, give me wisdom. You promised it in James 1, 5. So I'm asking, and it says, ask, you know, and believe and don't doubt. I sometimes would stop with asking it, and, I, and I, over the years I've messed up on that one, John. Sure. I've asked, and then as soon as he gave me wisdom, I started to try to second guess it. And then uh, the hard part for me, because I'm a man that likes to to move and act, is to wait on God after I ask for wisdom. And in Jeremiah 33, it says, Call to me, and I will answer you, and I'll tell you great and mighty things you don't know. Well, just as you think about that, if he's going to tell you great and mighty things you don't know, it means you must pause. If you're not pausing, you're not going to hear. So sometimes, John, I have asked for wisdom, and like, And thank you so much. Oh, and now I've got to get into my day. Sure. So I've asked and run. So if we want to know God's will, we need to ask and wait. Like literally, like uh, if it's a desperate situation, sometimes on my face before God, in private, uh, on our knees, uh, in in a way that for, for you and me, we know for us, we're humbling ourselves before God. And then, uh, just as important as all of these, in Isaiah 8.20, to the law and to the testimony. If it doesn't speak according to this, there's no light in them. So 
I take that principle and I say, whatever is my landing point of what I understand to be the wisdom of God, then I say, God, here's, here's your written word. Now, is there anything in your word that your Holy Spirit can show me that would affirm my landing point? Or is there anything in your word that you can use to disturb me that I don't quite get it yet? And so I ask him, and then as the Holy Spirit leads me, I go through the word, looking at principles, testing my landing point to see, is it sound to the word of God? You have had people tell you you're crazy. Oh, yes. Yeah. You yeah. have to have. There's a danger for Christians. You can, you, you, you can find them. Everything is the voice of God. Yes. Everything. Yes. And then for others, oh, that, that doesn't ever happen. So what do you, how do you answer someone who says, oh, that's just a little crazy. God doesn't speak like that. Of course he does. How, how do you respond? There, there's, a, there's an education process, perhaps. Yes. How, how do you or do you respond yes. to that? Uh, well, one thing is I'm, I'm very interested in knowing family, friends, acquaintances, or even strangers. If someone comes up and really is disturbed by what my conviction is, you know, God's called me to do this next or whatever, then uh, would they pray with me about it? Is there, is there a principle of scripture that maybe I'm neglecting? Sure. Uh, so I think we have to be open to God giving wisdom through our family, friends, those that walk with God around us, and, uh, and be open to them challenging us. And, but we should also see, are you challenging me out of this position? Or is it out of fear? Mm. Good questions, good points. Uh, you did something that, let me see, not anyone else had ever done. Children's ministry has been around for just about as long as they've been children. Mm -hmm. But while you were pastoring in a church in Tennessee, you did something a little bit different. Now, now in discipleship is, is your organization. Mm -hmm. I got to know you when you were leading something called Kids in Discipleship, mm -hmm. encouraging people, particularly in churches. I, I, I visited you while I was a local church yes. pastor. And that's and, still and the we, core of what we do, Kids yeah. in Discipleship. Th that, that's a departure from the norm. You know, it's not regular old children's ministry, and I'm not putting a damper on that. Mm -hmm. This was different. Yes. How did God lead you into this to help you to see the importance of this and then convince you you really needed to be focusing on discipling kids? so mm -hmm. important. How yes. did God get you to that? What did you go through? Yes, I was a youth director at the time in Alabama, Mississippi, Han Panhandle, Florida. Love working with youth. And I kept running into these kinds of conversations. Parents would come up to me. Don, uh, we did A, B, C, D, E, F, G for our kids. We gave them Christian education. We took them to church. We spent time with them. We played with them, did, played ball with them, whatever. All these kinds of wonderful things. And we lost them not only to the church, but in some cases they said we lost them to Jesus. Mm. What did we do wrong? Yeah. Now, I heard this once, twice, but then I heard it again and again and again. And it disturbed me so greatly that my wife and I started crying out to God, well, what are we missing? One day as I was hiking down a trail, literally, I was pleading with God, God, I may not be the right one to, to hear uh, an idea about what we can do differently for the new generations, but I'm an open guy. I'm open to you. I'm a willing guy but I may not be the right one. But God, is there anything you can tell me? And as I'm walking down the trail, I had a very abrupt encounter with God. Mm. Unseen, not verbal, you know, not audible, I should say, but right to my heart and to my mind again. Engaging both, important by the way, mm. <laughs> to engage mm -hmm. both. And that still small voice of God said, Don, the problem is that you are not discipling the kids. And he was confronting me as a pastor, but also I believe he was confronting us as Christians and believers in God. I recoiled on the trail. And I was like, uh, not discipling the kids. And I listed to him everything I could think of that we do as Christians for the new generations. And, uh, you know, all kinds of things we do. And programs based. And at the end of it, that still small voice of God said, is it possible that a child can go through all of those those programs and come out the other side and still not be my disciple. Mm. And I was like, oh, I said, Lord, I said, not only is it possible, it happens all the time. Yeah. Are you with me there? Does that make sense? Oh, oh, am I ever. Uh, you, you, you hit on a point here. We, we convince ourselves in church and in church work that a program is sufficient. Yes. 
Yes. And nothing could be further from the truth. Yes. Programs may be good, may be helpful, may not be helpful, but a program doesn't, doesn't, no kid was ever converted by a program. Yes. No kid. Yes. So he wasn't finished. And so I was, okay, now, now he got my attention. I was like, okay, maybe we don't really disciple so much. Maybe we just do programs for kids and for teenagers and youth. And I said, is anything else? I was a little bit nervous to say. And that still small voice said, secondly, you are divorcing children and youth from their parents. And again, I was like, that was even stronger. I said, whoa. I said, God, I love the family. I, I love kids and their families. I, you know, what, what are you saying? He said, think back to everything that you do with kids and youth and, and you know, university students. And, and so I thought, you know, all the programs and things that, that April and I have done with kids and youth. And he said, haven't you bypassed the parents? Aren't the parents supposed to be the primary spiritual mentor of the child? I was like, uh, and I didn't know what to say. Probably, but they're busy. I started giving excuses for them. He said, you've divorced them from their God-given role to disciple the, their own children. I want to find out what happened next, and I know you do too. He is Pastor Don McClafferty. I'm John Bradshaw. This is our conversation. We'll be back with more in just a moment. You know that at It Is Written, we are serious about the study of the Word of God, and we encourage you to be serious about God's Word also. Well, I want to share with you another way that you can dig deeper into the Word of God, and here it is. It is written dot study. And I said, so God, what am I supposed to do with this? And he said, start a ministry that addresses this. Call the parents back. Equip the parents to be the primary disciple maker of their own children. And I had no clue where to begin. Let me ask you this. What, what's your response, what's your reaction from the typical parent when you look them in the eye and say, but you are to be the disciple maker in your family? My imagine is you're going to get the deer in the headlights thing. Absolutely. But, but isn't that the, 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 the Bible class teacher mm -hmm. in church? Isn't that what church school is for? It's a yeah. f Oddly enough, yes. it's a foreign concept to many yes. Christian parents. Why is that? Yeah, a classic example is one, one pulled me aside uh, a very educated person and said very quietly, looked around both ways, literally to the left and to the right and said, I love the idea of discipling my children. No one discipled me. Yeah. No one discipled me. And so we, we have to, to start out with saying, you know, it's all right. Probably most of us on the planet were not intentionally discipled by someone because sure. we've thought program so long. And so we start out with coming alongside of the, of the parent in a small group setting with other parents, uh, grandparents or mentors. It could be uncles and aunts or even big brothers, big sisters. But we're really after the parent primarily. And we help them grow as a disciple first of Jesus, an intentional disciple following Jesus wherever he calls you through the written word of God. And secondarily, how do you come alongside of your children so you can be an intentional disciple maker Give me two, three, four, five principles quickly. We've got other things to talk about. I don't want you to, 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 to share the entire discipleship program, but what is, what, give, give me some points. What are the sort of things you tell parents? Um, you can't take a child on a journey that you're not on. Point one, so, amen. Powerful. Yeah. So if you want your child to walk with Jesus, walk with him. If you want your child in the word, then enjoy him every day. If you want your, your child to, to pray, then pray and not just over dinner. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Give me another couple. Another one is... We, we could uh, talk about these the, things at length. Yes. Maybe yes. another time. But if, you are, if you're going to disciple your child to Jesus, it's, it's all based on relationship. If you don't have time to play with your kid, then your kid probably doesn't have time to pray with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So those, those are two very powerful things. Yeah. How did this develop, the, 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 the discipleship uh, aspect or the training? What did you witness? What did you see? And how did it affect and, and uh, impact lives? Well, uh, it started out slow, of course, as everything uh, does from the beginning. You have to have a beginning point. And, but then I saw a light start coming on in parents' eyes. And here is a classic thing that happened. And this, is, this has happened many, many times. One man who was a very busy father, very successful in his own business, 
never cracked open this book basically unless if he was in a religious you know ceremony or you know public worship not privately yeah so he got convicted uh in those 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 small group settings as we did studies together he got convicted i need to be in this book but he was a little embarrassed about it and so one day when he was on vacation he waited till you know he got up early in the morning he waited till no one else was around and so he cracks open the bible for probably the first time outside of a public time okay so he's he's in the bible like this now his kid probably 10 or so comes down a little later his dad is, is so engrossed with what he's finding because he's discovering jesus for himself he's actually getting excited about the one that he believes in but hasn't really met in his heart so he's engrossed like this he's studying and he doesn't notice that his 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 son boom 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 coming down the chairs uh, the stairs and he comes right up to him screeches to his halt and he says dad what are you doing like that like shocked like literally shocked and he says well, what do you mean what am i doing you, you're you're reading the bible i mean he was that shocked now this is a christian home but my friend it is very easy to be a christian home but not be into christ and not be into the word and so the son was shocked to see his busy, busy dad actually breaking open this book. And the dad kind of got a little red in the face, but he said, you're right, you haven't seen me in this book, and I haven't been here, son. But I'm going here now because I want to know Jesus for myself, and I want you to know him for yourself. Pull up a chair. The boy pulls up a chair. Together, they read scripture together. Oh, fantastic. Now, I know some people might say, Nice, no big deal. No, big deal. Yeah. It shook up that father and son. It shook up their relationship. This led to the father being intimately uh, involved in his son's walk with Jesus. It, it moved into him taking his son uh, downtown where they lived and serving others that had much less than they did. Uh, you see how something that happens in your heart can't stay there. It went from the father to the son and then together going out and doing something for others in the name of Christ. So someone right now is thinking, oh, and this is, that's me. He's talking about, I haven't read the Bible. I, 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 I go to church. I'm on the church board. I read the Bible text every so often. People look at me as a pillar, but I'm not. What's your advice to that person? Hmm. Then because there's stuff. lots of them. Don't oh, they? yes, 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 yes. So don't beat yourself up over it. Okay. And, and don't be driven by guilt about it because guilt can even keep us away from this thinking, well, I, I've already gone through so much of my life. And so why should I start now? And I'm probably not going to understand it anyway. And there's just a couple simple principles before you even break open the Bible, before you even open it, pray humbly and say, God, you don't have to say these words, but pray for this. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Say, I need the Holy Spirit to be my teacher. Because the Word of God says that, Jesus said to himself, right in the Word, he says, I don't leave you as an orphan. So like, you don't have to read this by yourself. I don't leave you as an orphan. I send you the Comforter. And he goes on to, to say who the Comforter is. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides you to all truth. So you pray for the Holy Spirit before you open the Word of God. When you open the Word of God, know what you're looking for. Now, this was something that I missed out on too much of my life, even, even in full-time ministry. Oh, there's so many fascinating topics, so many fascinating things. But then one day when I, was, I came to John, Gospel of John 5.39, I found out that simple passage where Jesus, he probably didn't have the physical word with him, but speaking of scriptures, he says, these are the scriptures that testify about me. Me meaning the Savior, Jesus Christ. Sure. That simple statement unlocks the whole written word of god so if as you said if if someone's listening right now someone's watching right now and they're saying where do i begin you always begin by praying for the holy spirit to guide you into truth who's the truth jesus is the truth he said in john 14 i am the way the truth and the life i am the way the truth and life so look for jesus now why is it such a big deal as you look for Jesus, all of a sudden, these pages take on life. Let's pick on a book that I know is one of your favorites, Revelation. Great book. The first five words, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If someone would just read the book of Revelation looking to see what kind of uh, portrait is being painted of the true Jesus Christ in this, all of a sudden it comes alive. That's right. And it's not just doctrine, 
but it's truly a painting of who the real Jesus Christ mm -hmm, is. Mm -hmm. Which is what the Bible is there for, to give us a revelation of God. The whole thing. To show us Jesus that we can experience. Yes. Uh, if, if we come to the Bible and say, this is a living book that can set me a light, change my life, whoa, we can start to experience something. I, I want to talk with you so much more about the, the discipling kids, but if, if we stop there, we'll miss some things. What kind of a crazy man quits his job as a pastor, a perfectly good town you're in, in Central California, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be unpaid and take this on full time? Maybe, maybe, oh, well, maybe we have the answer. We know what kind of crazy man you did. Uh, describe that journey what it looked like. You're already involved up to here with discipleship and discipling and families and kids and so on. God clearly wanted to take you somewhere else. So you became an unpaid volunteer in a foreign country. Let's step back from the, 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 the ministry of Dawn and talk about the experience of Dawn for a second. What was that like? Well, when, now I wish I could look you in the eye and say that that morning, that as soon, the second as that, that God gave me that right to my heart, that I said, yes, Lord, I'm in. But I was thinking about my wife. I have to be honest, which well, I, I love and, and I think it's adore. appropriate that you were. And I was thinking about the fact that, now, by the way, we're, we're almost to celebrate 33 years together. Amen. So we've been tracking together for a long time. Fantastic. And uh, I love Jesus as number one, but she's, she's number two. Yeah and in all the world. And she's also my best friend after Jesus. So I was a little, actually more than a little concerned. How do I explain this to April? And so I was praying about that and I said, God, I need to see her. I need to look into her eyes, the eyes of the one that, that I love so, so much. And I need to know that I'm hearing you right. Have I heard you right? So I asked him a second time. And that still small voice said, you've already heard me. I wish I could say I stopped right then, but I was really, really nervous. My heart was thumping. I, I, I felt that God was definitely talking to me, but was there any nuance? Was there anything that I was missing? I asked him one more time, have I heard you directly? Have no, I heard I, you clearly? This, and, bi this biblical precedent of that, Gideon, Gideon checked and double checked. And the answer was yes. So I literally took this Bible and I zipped it up. And uh, now I didn't have to have the flashlight. The sun was just barely coming up. And I trucked back. My heart was beating and I knew what I needed to do. And April was just waking up. And she said, we've been praying for about two months for God's direction on this. Do we have good news? Now, now John, how would you answer if your wife says good news when you know that what you're about to tell her is, we're about to leave our paid job and just go wherever God calls next? Yeah. You know, would you be a little nervous? I'd be I'm a little putting nervous. you on the spot. Yeah, Sorry, no, but, I, I might so, be a little nervous. <laughs> so, yeah, I, was a lot, I, I think I'd say we have good news. It sort of <laughs> depends on how you define that word good. Yes, I said there's good news. And I said, uh, I think we better pray first. So we, now our eyes were big because whenever I say we got to pray first, yeah, she, she knows, knows something's coming. Because we've had other things that God's called us to do. Oh, yeah. So we get on our knees together and we pray. And we get up and I said, now look. I said, when God called you and me to be husband and wife, we are a team. I said, I'm about to tell you something that's way out there beyond anything he's ever asked of us or called us to do ever before. I said, if God is in this, I trust that he will show you. Maybe not in the second, but maybe in the days ahead, whatever. Now, there was a little tears in her eyes. I mean, she knew, and it wasn't that she was, it was like discouraged. She was moved in her heart. Yeah. She knew this was a serious moment. This is big. She said, okay, tell me. So I told the story that I just told you. And she listened. And I was prepared. I didn't know if she would start crying, like weeping, because, you know, we have three children. And my wife is a mama bear of those children. I mean, she makes sure that they have clothing and education and food and everything. And that's wonderful. She's an awesome mom. And I did not know what her reaction would be. She looked me in the eye. And she's a very quiet, gentle person. She's my, she's my opposite, OK? So I'm on the shyer side. And she said very quietly, this is what God has spoken. So this is what we'll do. And it's almost like, uh, can, can you say that again? I mean, that's what I felt like saying. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I almost fell over yeah. because I was in shock. I was not expecting this is what God has spoken. This is what we'll do. And, and in fact, <clears throat> in a, just even moments later, I was troubled by her faith. And I'll tell you why. Because if it was switched around and she came back to me after such an encounter in the word, 
and in prayer and said, Don, God's telling us to drop what we're doing and go wherever he calls. Would I have said to April, this is what God has spoken to you and this is what we'll do. I'm just being honest with you. It, it troubled my own, my own faith journey, I was, but, but it was also precious and delightful. Let me so, ask you this question, Don. Yeah. So as a pastor, your, your duties mm -hmm. are very clearly defined. Yes. You know what you do from day to day. Yes. You know what you're building towards each week. And then yeah. you have your, your discipleship ministry uh, with that. Yes. So you have a full schedule every day. Yes. When you drop that, mm -hmm. and you take a step into the unknown. Mm -hmm. It would be one thing if you said, well, we've got these 50 speaking engagements mm -hmm. and these 50 training seminars yeah. and there's no way else I can <clears throat> fit it in. So I need to quit this and do that full time. Were you stepping into a full schedule? No. Or were you stepping, well, I don't know what we're going to do. We're just going to follow God. We had, we had many things happening globally sure. in, our, in the nonprofit, yes. But uh, those, those invitations were based on, um, on my timing outside of my pastoring. So it was kind of like uh, half and half, sure. but it's never half and half, yeah. you know. So, no, it was, it was not going into something that was all pre-planned. Yeah. Or prepare. See, I can see, I can see, I can see myself doing that. Oh yeah, look, it's the only way we can get all this done, and you know the demands on our time, and so so let's do that. It all makes yeah. sense, but it wasn't it wasn't that. No. So that was a step of faith. Absolutely, and 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 uh, the focus though is not on how big our faith was. The focus is on how mighty is God. Oh sure, is really that's the deal. Yeah, because He's as mighty for you as for me and for all those watching right now. Right? He's oh, he as mighty. Is. Oh yeah, no question. We ate breakfast and we determined as we ate breakfast and prayed again that if we played around with this conviction, even for a moment, even for a day, John, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just knowing ourselves, that we may have friends or family that we share with and we could get discouraged because of the very things that you asked me about a little bit ago. So people can say, that's crazy, you have three kids, sure. they're still going through uh, education, you know, who, what do you think you're doing? And so uh, I threw on a suit and tie and went that morning to my boss, and I said, this is what has happened. I told the same story I told you. And I said, so look, uh, this was like November 22, 2016. And I said, look, we're about to close the year out. So I'm gonna take these last five or six weeks and tie off properly uh, here, because we're an equipping, we're, I'm an equipping kind of pastor. So there was equipping things that we're right in the middle of, and also with the area that we're in. And then I said, then I offered to be a volunteer while you're looking for another pastor, but it will be on the basis of as I can because I will be now with the focus that God's given me globally. So the, my boss knelt down and prayed with me and he said, I believe that God is moving in this. I'm very concerned though, I have to be honest with you. He said, I'm very concerned who's gonna provide for you. Sure. He said, is in discipleship your ministry going to pay you uh, something? No. Is it gonna, are they gonna pay a, a stipend? No. I said, our ministry is a give model. We don't sell anything, so it's just give. Hmm. He said, I have to say, I'm gonna register my concern. Who's gonna take care of your family? Well, those questions were answered. I'm looking forward to finding out some more of those answers. So when we get back on the other side of this break, I wanna ask you, how did things open up when you stepped into the water? I wanna want you to tell me about how the Jordan yes. just opened up for you. Then we'll talk a little bit about what you're doing now. You've got some books you've written. I yep. want to find out about them. There's plenty to talk about. This is a story of great faith in a great and a mighty God. And what I'm hoping today is that Don's experience with God will encourage you to have a wonderful, close experience with God of your own. We'll be right back. You couldn't see and how... And studying the medical research... There's toes in the Jordan River. I want to find out what happened to Don when you decided that, said, I'm quitting my job. I'm going to travel to another place to take on a, a, an entirely faith-based volunteer role. What did you experience? I mean, immediately the, the money poured in and the speaking assignments stacked up on top of each other. Or oh, how did it play out? Because wow. this, was, this was a step into the unknown. <laughs> yes. Uh, it wasn't quite that exciting. Uh. So <laughs> it I, never is. I mean, it, it was exciting in a different way. Sure. Exciting that, that we didn't have those things happen. So that is exciting also. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so, so how do so, you see God work this thing out and establish this and confirm, this is really where I want you? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, people didn't know that we were taking this step. And when they did hear we were taking the, the step, they assumed that our ministry was paying for us. So no, money came in 
well, almost nothing came in. And we went into our first month. I mean, it's like going off of a cliff, John. And we have, you know, three kids in school and, uh, you know, all the normal medical things and everything that all the families have. And so we had some, some rough months, but then, you know, just really testing our faith. And the other question was, where are we supposed to operate? Sure. And so we, we did this to God. We put our hands up. I like, I, I work with all ages and I like symbolism. So you know, when you put your hands up, it's a message to God. You know, I give up to you. I surrender. Mm. When it's mm. like this, I'm holding on. I'm holding on to my security and everything. So my wife and I did this to God. We said, we'll live anywhere on the planet where you want us to operate this, this ministry and we'll go. And I'm a little nervous about that, but we said, we will, by, your, by grace, by the grace of Jesus Christ, we will go. So, so slowly but surely, as the months, uh, you know, passed by, God started taking care of us in unusual ways. Sometimes there would be a knock at the door and someone would say, would you, would you like some vegetables? Oh yes, we would like some vegetables. You get the idea. Yeah. Sometimes there'd be a check in the mail, whatever. But very slowly, and, but God always provided just what we needed for rent, for the basic things. And then one day as we were praying, and this is a whole other story in itself, but one day as we we're praying, he, he made it clear to us that we should go to Alberta, Canada. And uh, that's a, a whole adventuresome story. My wife, by the way, does not do well in cold. And so we really asked God, and she asked God, is this really you? And again, through prayer and waiting on him and, and the steps that we've already talked about, testing in the word of God, being vulnerable to the word of God, it became clear, no, he is calling us to go mm -hmm. to Alberta, Canada. Mm -hmm. So my wife's the detail person, so she did all the detail work and I worked with her on that. She made a lovely notebook for both of us as a couple and also our daughter. We had one daughter still living at home, our youngest daughter. And so got that all ready. Everything was in readiness to go to Canada except for one thing. And the one thing left was the most important thing. And that is we had no uh, invitation from Canada, you know, for a special visa for us to go. Not as a visitor, but to live there, okay? So, so I said, so God, what do we do? So our daughter needed to go into school. It was coming right up to the fall. We were weeks away and still nothing. We call our, our lawyer up in Canada who is overseeing the process, the move process, and all the detail work. And how long will it be? Oh, another five, six months. So we take this back to God. So God, are we supposed to put a hold on this? And as we pray, God says, I have urgency for you to go to Canada. I said, well, God, if you have urgency, then, then, then uh, please bring this in the mail. Nothing, day after day. Now we're just, yeah, again, it's just a couple weeks out of school. I said, God, what do we do? Put your feet in the Jordan. I said, you want me to, uh, you're not asking me to go illegally across. I mean, I'm not going to, that's, that's not right. <laughs> God, almost, I can picture him chuckling. No, not illegal. Go by faith up to the border of Canada. Without my paperwork? Yes, without my paperwork. So, so we, we put everything into the van. We had to get rid of some things. Everything we possessed into a little truck I could drive. So, I mean, no one's paying for it. So, I mean, I have to drive the, the moving truck. Before, and when I was a paid pastor, people would move me, you know. Uh, we pack, they move. Now, I'm, I'm packing and moving. And so, and my wife's driving our, our little van behind us. And we go a thousand miles up to the border. And every day we check our email and with expectation that something will happen. Good. From the lawyer. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Mile after mile. But guess what? On the very morning, we're two miles away, literally, from the border to cross into Canada. Guess what happened? Just guess. Uh, you got an email saying, here's the paperwork, download it and go to the border and we're going to welcome you to Canada. No, hey. nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing at all. No, nothing. I'm two miles away. <laughs> oh, I said, so God, home, which we don't even have anymore, home is, to, is a thousand miles behind me and we're two miles away. And, and God, there's nothing from the lawyer. I have no legal way to cross. What do I do? And that still small voice of God says, keep putting your foot in the Jordan. I said, so what does that mean? Go to the border and present your papers. But God, I said, this is all, you know, just direct with, with God. God, I said, my wife has lovely notebooks with everything but the one main thing that we have to have. Go, put your feet in the Jordan. So we hop into the trucks and we go, we're going up there. And of course they wave me, they see me in, a, in the big moving truck, they wave me over, because this is not gonna just be show your passport and come for a visit. So they wave me over. They know I need to have a sit-down visit 
with the officers. So our little family troops in there, we present our lovely notebooks and they go through it and the man is impressed. He said, wow, your wife has done such a wonderful job. I'm starting to sweat a little bit because yeah. I know what's coming. And his, and his brow furrows and he says, but you are missing something, sir. You don't have your proper paperwork from our government to allow you to move here. You're not visiting, correct? I said, no, we're not visiting. You're moving here, right? Yes, sir. And you don't have it? No, sir. Then follow me. Oh, I thought I was in trouble. And so we follow the officer. He gets up, you know, and, and, we, and, he, and I don't know, are we going to go into some kind of clinker for a while? I mean, I don't know if we're in trouble. I, I don't know. And so he leads us uh, right outside, and he goes right up to the truck. Is this your truck? Yes, sir. How far did you come? A uh, thousand miles. He shakes his head like this. I can tell he's getting ready to tell me something, and I can feel it's not good. Yeah, the, these, these people are not paid to have sympathy or compassion. Absolutely. They're he's paid not to paid to apply the law. He's not paid to get me into Canada. He's paid no. to keep me out unless if I have proper documentation. Correct. Absolutely right. And I'm glad you brought that out because <laughs> uh, you'll understand what happens next. He shakes his head and he says, um, Sir, there is absolutely no way, it is impossible for me to get your family into our country. There is no way I can even conceive of that you can get into this country with the, the, the paperwork that you have. You're missing the primary document. And he walks away. I mean, that's it. Yeah. Case closed. He walks away. And I literally, you know, we can pray without, you know, m talking out loud. And so I, I, I send up a prayer to God. And it goes like this. It's very simple. Help. God, I need help. Here's my wife. Here's my daughter. And bless their hearts. They're watching him walk away. And I know they're thinking, and we're thinking, are we going back a thousand miles? No. God told us to go here. And do we feel like a fool? Yeah, we feel foolish. But it's what God told us to do. And, and so I said, God, I need you to intervene. I need your help right now. And as soon as I said, amen, the officer, and remember, this is a silent prayer. The officer spins on a dime and comes like an about face, and he comes marching right back up to me. Strange, because I never said a word out loud. And he says to me a question that a Canadian, my Canadian friends say is never asked by an officer. He says, he leans forward, and he says very uh, kindly, what were you hoping that I would do for your family? Officers are not trained to figure out what we are hoping they would do for our family. No. And so I, I, I thought, I don't know if he's a believer or not. And I said, sir, I said, uh, I don't know if you're a believer in God or not, but I said, God has moved us on our heart to come up to Canada and do a special ministry to, to strengthen the family and help families mentor their children to know Jesus and to walk with Jesus. He said, hmm. That's all he said. It couldn't, there's no flicker on his face. I can't, don't know if he's a believer or not. Follow me, he says, just like that, curtly. Follow me. So we go back in there. He says, please have a seat. For one hour, he works on it, bless his heart, trying to find out what he already had told me is totally impossible. Two hours he works. Three hours he works. And then he gets another agent and then another agent. So three agents are working or officers are working. And four hours, five hours after five hours, and we were just, we were praying and praying and praying. He says, Mac Lafferty family, please come forward. We come forward. And he has this, our passports there. And he goes, no way. He says, welcome to Canada. And he found us a way. That's a whole other story. But he found us a way. And then I said, sir, I said, again, I don't know. I just dropped my voice. I don't know if you are a believer in Jesus Christ. But I said, may I pray a prayer of thanksgiving right now? Bless his heart. He looks to the left. He looks to the right. And, he, uh, and by the way, that's not the context of going into Canada in that setting. I mean, they, they're not used to having people pray, certainly not out loud. Oh, absolutely. In that setting. Are you with oh, me there? A hundred percent. So he's nervous. I, mean, I, he, I think I know the very border crossing that, that you're Probably. About. We yes. won't say it, but yes. <laughs> so he's nervous about it. And he says the third time, follow me. So we go out. And I thought, I hope I didn't like upset him or something. Yeah. And we go out there and I said, sir, I said again, I don't know if you believe that God even is real or not, but God, the living God of heaven and earth, he just worked a miracle through you as an officer here at this border because you had told me that this was impossible and he found a way. And the man was shaken up, visibly shaken. And he said, what you don't know is the other part of the story. He said, just a few months ago, my wife and I, who have been followers of Jesus Christ, we gave up 
on our church. We just got discouraged. We gave up on the Lord Jesus Christ. We just said he doesn't exist because he's not intervening in our life. We don't see any evidence of his existence. And we have given up on both church and God. And he said, today, just seeing that what happened, and he said, he looked us in the eye, he said, I know personally that I knew of no way to get you in. It was impossible. He said, I know that God lives. And today, as soon as I get off of my shift, I will go home to my wife and I will tell her the story and we will believe together and we will make our home a place of worship. Fantastic. God is able, isn't he? <laughs> he is. Yeah, um, those border stories, they're doozies. What an amazing experience. You got into Canada, this thing started to go, we don't have too many minutes, yes. so, so, so briefly, and I want to ask you about some books you've written. Yes. Uh, tell me about the kind, of, uh, the kind of training opportunities you've had since that time. Oh, God just worked in such a precious way. Across Alberta and other parts of Canada, uh, God opened the door to start having revivals and then to do discipleship training. And then, of course, we've continued to work around the world uh, as well in every continent except the Antarctica we talked about. Yeah. So God's just moving. And even in, during these days of, of pandemic, God still opens the doors for revivals and discipleship training, both online but also in person. Yeah, fantastic. God's yeah. moving. Yeah, you, you know what I wish, and I don't want to sound like a subversive saying this. Mm -hmm. Be careful, do your thing, wear your whatever, keep your distance, whatever, whatever. But there's still a way. Yes, There's always, still a way for a God way. to work. It, yes. it may look different. Yes. It may not be able to do it exactly the same, but there's still a way. The people who've thrown their hands up in the air and said everything's off, can't do nothing, I, I think their God is f yeah. far too small. There's a way to get certain things done. And thank God many people have been able to go forward in ministry and, and church and so forth. And we do it respectfully. Oh, 100%. With whatever, yeah. Yeah, we must. You've got to, you've got to respect the context. But, but the idea that doors are shut no uh, i think uh, god is the they're god opening the... faster than ever yeah amen hey so you wrote some books yes tell me about those and, yes. and i won't even ask you why because i know they're writing books <laughs> is a lot of work but god <laughs> has given you experiences you put them on paper so tell me about them. yes and it's a joy to tell you about them because i don't sell them you i don't only sell give them, them away oh, okay I'll, I'll give them to you I'll, I'll give them to your ministry i'll give them to whoever wants them so Fantastic. so uh these are the last five books and i'll just tell you about them just real quick one is follow Follow. Mm -hmm. Follow is a book about how to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Every chapter is a step to do with Jesus. This is not just for your own devotions, John. Like if I, if I trust you with this, if I give this to you as a gift, it comes with a challenge. Go and read this with somebody that God calls you to disciple. Maybe someone who has a religious experience but doesn't have Jesus as their, as their disciple maker awesome. in their life. All right. Okay, so that's that. All right. This next one, Discipling the New Generations. Our daughter, Julie, and I wrote this together. For four years, we prayed and wrestled with God about how to do this. The first five lessons are for parents and mentors. The last 20 lessons are for parents, mentors, and their children and teens. Nice. Okay? All right. And the next one is Live Like Elijah. This little book is taking the, the powerful lessons of Elijah in the Old Testament and showing that the same God who lived back then, lives just as much today, and just as he provided for Elijah with nothing, it shares the, the last three years of our life how God provided for us in crazy ways. Mm. Like sometimes um, in the snowstorm, we'd have a knock at the door and someone would say, could you use a bushel of, of I know what it was, it was apples. And I said very calmly, even though I, I really needed the food right then, I said very calmly, yes, we could use some apples. I said very politely, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. And as soon as I shut the door with a bushel of apples, I said, April, I said, God has answered our prayers yeah, again amen. and provided. Yeah, <laughs> so amen. just full of stories like that. Yeah, fantastic. Okay? The next one is called Come Home. Come Home. In this time of pandemic, even though we are home more than ever, maybe it's time that we come home with our hearts to what God wants to do in our homes. Because John, God has vision for our home. It's for our families. This book can be used just for you personally. You and your wife could do it together. Uh, you can invite other families together. Either if you're not comfortable doing that uh, in your home, you could do it online and a small group style. Okay. Cool. And then the last one just came out. Schools and Discipleship. Nice. Schools and Discipleship is full of recipes of how a school can work with a home to disciple the kids intentionally. Mm. These little recipes can also be used in lots of other avenues or, or venues with children and youth ministry.
Outstanding. So anybody wants to get a copy of this book, these books? What They're they do? downloadable for free okay. on our website, indiscipleship.org. Okay, indiscipleship, uh, clearly one word and it's just spelt like it sounds. Yes, and then we also, we also give them away in boxes of 100. Yep. If you tell me how you're going to use them because we don't want to sacrifice to send you a box of 100 and you put it in storage. Yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a crime. <laughs> don't we have about a minute left, just a little over a minute. I've got to get you to tell me in a minute, how do you understand the gospel? I mean, 60 seconds is not long enough, but, but you'll find a way. Speak the gospel to, what's a, the gospel? The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. And in Colossians 1, the mystery of the entire gospel is that Jesus Christ lives in you, lives in me, the hope of glory. And next verse, verse 28. And because of that, we find our completeness in this Christ. He is our Savior. He is our Lord. He is our righteousness. And we are enough in Christ. Amen. Amen. Don, it's been fun. It's not over. The journey's, I mean, God brought you all the way back across the continent to Eastern Tennessee. Yes. And there's a whole lot more ahead. Mm. Thank you very much. May God bless you. Thank you. Your family, your partner in ministry, April, the yes. kids, and those you meet and interact with. Our prayers are with you always. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's been a joy to meet with you. The website again is indiscipleship.org. Mm -hmm. Yeah indiscipleship, one word, dot org. You can find out more about what Pastor McClafferty is doing, his ministry, how to support him, how to get the books, which would change your life and the lives of others. Thank you so much for being part of our program today. I hope you've been encouraged and blessed and that it's gonna be your mission inspired by God to be a disciple of Jesus and a maker of disciples. He is Pastor Don McClafferty. I am John Bradshaw and this was our conversation. That was indeed a very inspiring conversation there. We need to be faithful. We need to have faith and we need to trust God. At this time, we're going to go into our prayer session. We're going to start the prayer song and we are going to be praying. Remember, you will receive the time to type your prayers in the chat. So at this time, let us just focus on Jesus. Let us have faith. Let us reach out and pray. Pray. Pray that you learn to know and follow the voice of God. Let us pray, brethren. Pray that you learn to know and follow the voice of God. Pray for the general conference session in St. Louis, U USA, which begins today. Pray for the general conference session in St. Louis, USA, which begins today. God is listening. Pray. You without any warning. The storm of your life had begun. Seeing no hope in the distance. You're frightened with no run. By now your vessel is failing. Pray for safe travel and hard preparation 
for all delegates in regards to the decision that will be made. Pray for safe travel and heart preparation for all delegates in regards to the decision that will be made. God is listening to our voices. The storm of your life had begun. Seeing no hope in the distance. You're frightened with no way to run. By now Pray that intercessors from all and over the world will join in drown. prayer for the leading of the spirit in the choosing of leaders for the future. Pray that intercessors from all over the world will join in prayer for the leading of the spirit in the choosing of leaders for the future. It hit you without any warning. The storm of your life had begun. Seeing no hope. Jesus is listening to our voices as we pray. With no to run. By now He's listening. Your is filling, and you're thinking that you'll surely drown. You cried out for help. Savior, and you know you can't give up now, cause you prayed all night. Cause Pray for the evangelistic commission of the church, that all will get involved. Remember the newly baptized. Pray for the evangelistic commission of the church that all will get involved remember the newly baptized For those who had lost their loved ones because of crime and violence, some will be buried today. Pray for those who had lost their loved ones because of crime and violence. Pray for those who will be buried today. You 
Jesus is listening. Reach out. Reach out to him. You can now type your prayer requests in the chat. Your time. Type your prayer requests in the chat. Persons who should pray for YouTube will be told when to pray. I will be reading some of the requests at this time. Okay, Sister Joyce Anderson is asking that we pray for all new converts who they are having problems at their home. But Watson is asking that we pray for his unspoken requests and his family. Sister Campbell is praying for those who had backslidden from the fold. Sister Maxine also is praying for those who had backslidden. Sister Green is asking that we pray for a young man that he will give his life to the Lord. Sister Chana is asking that you pray for her and her family members. Sister Linda is asking that you pray for her unmentioned requests. Sister Rona is asking that we pray that she learn to listen and hear the voice of the Lord. Sister Myrtle is asking for protection for Ratri who is in a new country and also that he will give his life to the Lord. She's also praying for a number of persons who she would love to see give their lives to, the, to Jesus. Okay. Sister Faith is praying for her children, grandchildren, nephews, and everyone, students, and everyone. Sister Magnalee is asking that we pray that she have the faith that she needs to have. Others are asking that we continue to pray that their daughters and sons will give their lives to the Lord and will return to Him. Sister Joan Thompson is asking that we pray for students who are doing exams, those who are homeless, and those who have turned to crime. Sister 
Someone else is asking that we pray that they receive a break from the stronghold of smoking, drinking, gambling, and cursing. Others are asking that we pray that they have more faith in God. And the requests are really going up for children to return. That's indeed a sore point. Children need to return to the Lord. Right, others are still praying for their families and their neighbors and their communities. Lots of persons are praising God for the presentation. Yes, it was really a very good presentation. It comes under the getting deeper in the 40 days of prayer. Sister Hortense Edwards is asking that we pray for her brother who is still in the hospital. Sister Princess is asking that we continue to pray for our ministry and our relationship with God and healing from past hurts. Sister C. Daly is having a cough and she needs healing. Sister K. God bless is asking that we pray for her and her daughter. Sister Pauline Francis is asking that we pray for the children all over the world, especially the children in Ukraine, in Texas, with the shooting of their classmates. And those that were killed also, their family members, pray for them in the supermarket. Still others are asking to be strengthened. All of us need to be strengthened and to have more faith in God. And there's a praise report for Ann Cooper who is who did the brain surgery and is now at home talking, walking and sending messages. And the person is saying thanks to the prayer platform. We are asked to pray for the frontline workers, the doctors, the teachers, taxi men, post office workers, firemen, prime ministers, pastors, presidents. Yes. Pray for those who are in foreign countries. Pray for those who need to have better relationship with their children. There's somebody with a pain in the back and the knees and is asking for prayer. We praise God, we praise God, we praise God. At this time, Sister Leonie Bailey will get ready to pray. She don't have to read the request again. There's a person with a cyst on her brain and she has two young children. She needs healing. So she's asking us to pray. Get ready. Sister Bailey to pray. Good morning, prayer platform. You have heard the request, and we are going to pray. Let us pray. Holy and righteous Father who art in heaven, we thank you for blessing us with life and with this platform this morning. We recognize, Lord, that you are a God of answered prayer. And because of that, we are here this morning. We recognize that the enemy is wroth with you because your glory is spreading out all over the world. And this platform has been instrumental in allowing this to happen. And as a result, the enemy is so wroth 
he is wrath that he's causing sicknesses and death and destruction on people. This morning, as we have heard the request, Lord, we have a praise report of someone being successful or reaching unto proper success from a brain surgery. Whilst there are others who are pending brain and spinal surgery. There are others who are in hospital who are suffering or at home suffering from pains, from depression, from financial problems and all such problems, other, such as financial problems can bring on more illnesses. But Lord, we know that you, God, you can heal because this is your will that as we make these petitions to you, Father, we are giving you work to do. There is some families that are, needs your help. They need to come out of depression, loneliness, smoking, drinking. Some needs to be drawn closer to you. Some have black, backslidden. Some needs a job. And others, Father, need to be faithful to you. We ask, Lord, that you will bless such families and help them to see that your coming is near and that you, God, is the one who is going to help them through these trying and difficult times. Then there are those who are requ had requests for, uh, that they are homeless. They are homeless ones and the crime and violence that is happening around us. Lord, I ask Lord Jesus that you will divinely come into the hearts of people and turn them from the destruction that they are doing and that they will turn to you in fullness of faith. Lord, then there are others who needs to listen to you and to have a closer walk with you. We pray, Father, that you will help them, that they will listen to you and that they will be drawn closer to you in a, in a way that they will hear your voice from time to time. There are those students who are doing exams. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will help them, that they will overcome. Be with it, those who mourn and those who are having problems in even putting their loved ones to sleep. Continue to be with your people, Father, and help them to overcome as this is your plan. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with answers, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mr. Patterson will now pray for the Zoom and community. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. Our great God and our Father, is there anything hard for you to do? There is nothing that you cannot do. So this morning, Lord Jesus, we come to you. Broken though we may be, Heavenly Father, because of what is happening around us. Discourage and frighten, Lord Jesus, for the things that we are seeing happening. But God, you said we should not fear. So this morning, we know that we have an advocate in heaven. A God who hears, see all things. And Jesus, your hands are not short for you to stretch forth. So we know that you can do all things. So Lord Jesus, this morning, as I call you on behalf of every prayer request that has gone up on the Zoom, Lord Jesus, you know every person's heart here this morning. You know their thoughts. I know everything about them this morning. So, Lord Jesus, I place each and every request, Heavenly Father, before you this morning. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that you do for them more than we are able to ask of you, Heavenly Father. We are asking, Heavenly Father, that you will step into the homes and into the hearts of people this morning. And we are asking you, Lord Jesus, to Help us, Heavenly Father, help each and every person that has typed in this chat this morning for our request this morning, that Lord Jesus, their prayer will be answered and they will see, God, how you are working in their life. Father God, we place our community, especially the community of Central Village in which I live, Heavenly Father, before you. We place this community before you, Heavenly Father. God, some. So I just wake up in the morning and you heard that somebody has died last night. Father God, we ask that you will step into this community and we ask Heavenly Father to step into the neighboring communities surrounding this community, Lord Jesus. We ask that you will go into Augustown, Heavenly Father, 
into Tivoli, God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will root up the stronghold of the enemy in our communities, Lord Jesus, and that you will place yourself in there, Heavenly Father. Help your to trust and believe that there is a God in heaven and that there is nothing that you cannot do. Father God, we just need to come to you and sometimes, God, we don't come to you, but your hands are our prayer even before we request it. So Lord Jesus, this morning, I just want to give you thanks for hearing our prayers. I want to give you thanks, Jesus, for answering our prayers. And Lord Jesus, do what it is that you have to do in our communities. In our Zoom family life, Lord Jesus, help us, Heavenly Father, to stand like the brave with our faces to the fore, knowing that we serve a mighty and a powerful God, a God who can do all. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing our prayers, and thank you for answering them, because we ask all these mercies with thanksgiving. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Incline thine ears to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you were blessed this morning, type amen. I know over 290 something persons on YouTube. I know you have been blessed. And I know that my Zoom family, over 35 persons, that your heart has been blessed. Sister Especially, Dobson, yes, we sister? had over 300 persons that were on um. YouTube. YouTube, it was near to 400, but we recognize that because of the length of the mm -hmm. the um the presentation they left, so we have to make mention of them also. And by the time we get off, you might see a thousand. And we are gonna ask everybody to share this very very important um video this morning. All right, thank you, thank you, Sister Ruth. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. I know, I can see Sister Shade tapping that she was truly blessed. We were blessed, we were encouraged. So let us have faith. Let us reach out. When we talk to God, have faith and listen to his voice. Now I'm reminding you of the prayer and fasting for Sunday from 6 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Come with your testimony of how the 40 days have helped you. So you're gonna share how it has been helping you for over the 40 days we have been praying. And also remember that the Clarendon pastors that they're in charge of the third quarter fasting and prayer on this platform. So Please, if you're from Clarendon, remind your pastors that they are in charge of the third quarter fasting and prayer um, coming up shortly. Now I'm seeing where Sister Fiona is celebrating her birthday. We want to say happy birthday, Sister Fiona, and may God continue to bless you. And for the others, Sister Ruth, anybody else on YouTube type their birthday? Why, Sister? <laughs> I don't know at all. <laughs> If you are celebrating your birthday, we want to celebrate with you. Yes, we can't eat the cake with you and drink the wine, but just know that we are there. We are praying for you and we're happy that you are able to live to see another day. Just have fun, relax, and just enjoy the day. No stress. For those who are sick, we are praying for you. Weeping is just for a time. Just have faith and know that God is with you taking you through this storm and for those of us who will be bearing our loved ones today I have my church sister will be going to the funeral after board meeting so we are praying for you we are praying for you continue to have faith in jesus and hold on because this is just for a night if it is that we have faith in god we trust and we believe and we know we know that this is just all of one, they're just sleeping. 
so joy will come in the morning once they were faithful. It's time to say goodbye. It's now 20 minutes to eight. And I know some of you have a very packed day. So enjoy, don't do too much. Remember to take a little rest. It is important to rest. So we're gonna say goodbye. Remember, remember, remember though, that if you stay in the presence of God, temptation will flee from you. Have yourself a wonderful Sunday. God bless you and continue to pray for each other. Be good.